Hi, before we start, I, um, I, I, I'm going to keep to reading because I tend to chat a lot, it's hard to make me stop. So I thought I would read, and I don't normally do that, but at least I'm the same as everybody else, this is a sort of unusual format for me. So I'm going to very quickly, before I start the slides, just tell you a little bit about myself more informally. Um, I'm from Cumbria, I've always lived in Cumbria all my life, in the Lake District or on the borders of the Lake District, which is the west coast of Cumbria. So I'm from Cleetamua, which is a, um, a town with an Irish history, and I think that's where my roots are. And I've always been involved in textiles. I have a history in my family of lace makers, clog makers. Um, I've always been interested in making clothes. And I think from when I was a very, <coughs> very tiny age, I've always stitched. The interesting thing is tonight, I'm not, and haven't been for quite a long time, stitching, which is really, really weird. I spent 10 years of my life, in the last 10 years, just trying to tell everybody else how good it is to get involved in crafts. So that's what my presentation is about. Okay. And I thought, 20 pictures had got me really going. I thought, 20 logos. Could I tell you about my life in 20 logos? <laughs> <laughs> and these are the people that have been part of my life, people I've worked for, people who've worked with me, places I've been part of, Cumbria Institute of the Arts. University of Cumbria, the Invalidate courses in Singapore, I worked for Vogue magazine as an intern, that was my first job. Um, my very first job was an au pair to a textile artist near Paris. Um, and then in, more recently I was um, a senior lecturer of couture at the University of Central Lancashire and then my previous employment just now was as principal lecturer of the Applied Arts um, the MA and B in it on us at the University of Cumbria. So it's funny how they all look very educational and it's really interesting tonight what you're going to talk about making because really making is at the heart of me but I've spent most of my life teaching other people how to do it. Um, and this is what I've done recently, um, just a couple of months ago, I produced this book, Thinking Caps. Um, it's formed from a personal case study of practice-based PhD. And this book's mostly about hats, which tells a personal story. So today I've taken 20 images from the book, and it gives you a taste of my personal context and memory, and of people and place. And it's so fundamentally important to me, the place I live in, and the people I've lived with and worked with, that I, I have actually made a hat about everyone. So that's how the book sort of started. And it was taken, I've always been a bit of an Adrian Mole really. I've, you know, written reflective journals all my life. And this is one of them. This is a snapshot of my reflective journal, which is how the book came about. I thought I'd like to scan the images from a sketch pad and narrate my journal over the top. So what I like to do is put the two together. So that's what I did. Um, I wanted to know how artists thought, and an uncanny thing happened, a strange thing happened. Because the sketch pad pages talk to me with my own voice and they told me how I thought and that was a really strange experience and that was what happened really. So this was, these are the hats coming up now and this is an old image, sorry for the, the quality but um, it's because it was lost in the flood, Cotton's flood in 2009. It's all about the ripples of sand and how they feel, the cold, hard, wet ripples of sand on West Cumbrian Beach, how it feels on your bare feet. And this one is about when it comes up, it's the raindrop. Um, again, it's thick, big raindrops that fall onto blue slate in the autumn sunshine. And all of these weather conditions are metaphors for emotions. This one was about a friend, um, a relationship between a close friend of mine who's living in Vanuatu in the South Pacific, and our email conversation sparked my imagination about her sandy lagoons and, and her coconut business that she was setting up, forging things out of waste coconut shells. This is all about you know, idyllic locations, isolated locations. My mother was very keen on Leeds poetry and this, his Irish lake isle of Innisfree. And this is about reminiscent of lake waters rippling in the sunshine and lapping against the shore. And it ends, on the end it has filaments that are like dragonflies, which are references to a romantic trip a long time ago. The colours, this was an interesting process. This was me using found objects 
using simple intuitive process. At the time I was investigating what happens if you let go and allow buried knowledge to emerge through the sense of touch. And I was doing the same thing here too, this was intuitive. It's called the sunshine line, but it's again a metaphor for emotion. Um, it's about happiness, renewed life and relief. How did I manage to get sunshine inspiration from Cleta Mirror and Hocker Meth in Cumbia? <laughs> really don't know, but it's very weak sunshine. Um, and it's the one that remains unfinished, as it's a conceptual double helix piece. It's about DNA. Um, it's a very sad piece, and it'll never be worn. And this piece has nothing to do with hiding emotions behind metaphors cloaked with, um, you know, any sort of ambiguity. This is just a release. It deals with the sense of presence and absence, with a passing reference to Barbara Hepworth. This one is about people I love, it's about my husband, it's a play on his nickname, Pip. Um, it is an old sound, it's very tongue-in-cheek, and it refers to steamy passion, with a particular sort of um, curls of steam that you can see. <laughs> um, and this one is going on show at the Greystock Arts Festival in May, on May Bank Holiday 2012, little plug there. Um, so you'll see it then, it's called In the Strength, this is a bit of a painful piece. Um, it's in a memory of three family members who died of cancer. And I've used digital printing and other objects together. And this is the same subject matter. Clouds and lining, more memory of pain. It's a major cloudburst, an intersection of two heavy hearts and painful silver linings. The only painful silver lining I could find was that I'm now alive because of my sister's death. The story plays out in parallel to a PhD and I'm tired of recording in a traditional way so I decide to record people's thoughts through pictures and through odd words that they use and my version of how they think. And they're all done through mind maps. Mind maps are very beautiful and begin to emerge as my way of using my sketchpad. And this is an example of one of them and it's called Digital Lace. This particular piece of Digital Lace is R-O-R-A-R-E. It's about the reflective process which involves observation, analysis, and evaluation. This is the cycle that makers use. This is how makers think. This is what I found out. So this is my contribution to knowledge, if you like. And my mind maps became dissected, rearranged, the way artists work with their thoughts. So what I did in the end was took my mind maps and they started becoming textile patterns. Um, they started, my handwriting was, as you can see there, um, looked like little bugs creeping across the page. Um, I started to play with them um, using um, this format. Um, it was all about the reflective process of critical thinking which enables artistic success. So it stops artists from repeating mistakes and helps them to grow, and that was what I was looking at. This is a textile design for a hat which has embodied research embedded within the object. The words on my list tell the story. The memory of this and what some artists have told me should really be kept under my hat sometimes. <laughs> but um, instead I made a hat with it. It was um, almost sending me mad, so hence the title. Um, this is the Mad Hatter's Topper. But I know that, well, we all know that mercury was the thing that sent hatters mad when they did the felting process. But for me, it was the process of dealing with 80,000 words and putting them into a sense of meaning to help people think. This is my last slide of my hat, which is uh, a cross-section of the thinking model. It was part of my PhD, and it's a cross-section of um, reflexivity linked to that of Cole's experiential learning cycle. And this last image is that section of the two held intention. In other words, the internal and external dialogue, similar to what Patty was talking about before. And this last one is my new logo, and this is my new um, life at the moment. I've left the university. The methodology that I used in my PhD of finding out how people think, encouraging people to be creative, creative has actually been incredibly um, special for me. Because what I've done now, finally, I've started, I've become, as a creative coach, um, in my rescued house in Cockermouth, which was flooded in 2009. And even though some of the objects are washed away, my memories are like me, they can't be washed away by the water, because I believe very strongly in emotional reflective intelligence. Um, 
and this is something that promotes creativity and inner strength. And it's something that I know on many levels, even through clothing, housing, lifestyle, the way we live, the way we think, the way women think in particular about the way they dress and the way they are. And that's quite important, I think, for our well-being. Um, so I'm hoping to extend into a social enterprise and help people respect their personal well-being through the methods that I uncovered. Okay.